Hello friends, this is Dr. Manish Soni and today we'll be discussing about Articaria. So, in Articaria, you can define Articaria as a dermatological disorder characterized by sudden appearance of itchy hives. So, itchy hives as you can see in this image these are itchy hives or the wheels along with itchy hives angioedema as you can see in this image a patient is having a swollen lip okay so angioedema or both so articaria is a dermatological disorder which is characterized by either itchy wheels or hives or angioedema or both of them now as you can see here that there are few differences between these hives and angioedema in hives as you can see there is a swelling so there is swelling which is surrounded by erythema Second thing here is that these lesions are very itchy. So itching is present along with sometimes a burning sensation is there. So itching with burning sensation and most of these wheels they resolve within 24 hours. While angioedema is again a swelling but the swelling is deep as you can see up to the level of dermis or subcutis. So this is deep swelling and instead of itching it is commonly associated with pain. So instead of itching pain is there and they take around 72 hours to resolve. So wheels resolve within 24 hours while this angioedema takes around 72 hours to resolve. Now various patients they suffer from articaria and there is a classification for articaria. So articaria can be classified. So this articaria can be classified into either chronic or acute. So acute articaria is when there are such episodes and they are of short duration that is less than six weeks and if it is occurring daily for more than equal to six weeks then it is chronic articaria so articaria can be acute or chronic acute if less than six weeks chronic if it is more than equal to six weeks now this chronic articaria is further divided into two it can be spontaneous can be spontaneous or it can be induced so it can be spontaneous or inducible now it is spontaneous if there are no triggers so if there are no triggers found then it is known as spontaneous chronic articaria and if there are triggers like many a times it occurs due to temperature or pressure or cholinergic articaria then it is inducible so you can see that the articaria can be divided into chronic or acute chronic is divided further into spontaneous if there is no trigger found if there are triggers then it is inducible and most of these spontaneous articaria they don't have any cause so the cause is not known and sometimes the cause is known okay so many a times the cause is unknown so that is idiopathic and if it is known then it can be due to autoimmune or various chronic infections okay 
So you can see that urticaria can be divided into acute, chronic, chronic further into spontaneous and inducible. And these spontaneous urticaria can be idiopathic, that is of unknown cause, or can be due to known cause like autoimmune or infections. Now today, the important one which we will be discussing is cholinergic urticaria. Why cholinergic urticaria? Because if you see last year AIMS exam, you will find that in November and May AIMS 2016, both the exams, there was a question on cholinergic urticaria. So let us discuss about cholinergic urticaria first. So cholinergic urticaria. It is actually induced by, so it is induced by increased body temperature. So it is induced by increased body temperature. And many a times this increased body temperature leads to sweating. So sweating is something which is causing this urticaria that is increased body temperature leading to sweating and this sweating can be associated with or increased body temperature can be associated with various things like it can be associated with anxiety so after anxiety perspiration occurs so it can be due to anxiety or due to strenuous work so hard work then due to gustatory stimulus gustatory stimulus or due to exposure to sunlight so due to excessive exposure to sunlight again the body temperature increases sweating occurs and this cholinergic urticaria occurs now the specific clinical feature of this cholinergic urticaria is pinpoint itchy wheels as you can see in this image this patient is having pinpoint itchy wheels so these pinpoint itchy wheels are seen and this type of urticaria is commonly seen in young individuals so in young individuals especially in the month of october so in month of October, where winter starts, there is a change in temperature. So this leads to cholinergic urticaria. Now, if you want to confirm your diagnosis, diagnosis can be confirmed by either treadmill running test, where we ask the patient to run on treadmill. So treadmill running can be done for 10 minutes. This will increase the core body temperature and thus precipitate cholinergic urticaria. Second thing, you can ask the patient to go for afternoon walk for 10 minutes. So again, due to exposure to sun, the body temperature increases and it precipitates. Now, there are various triggers as we have already discussed. So various triggers can be there like anxiety, exercise, emotion, then gustatory stimulus, bathing in hot water. So these are various trigger factors like commonly exercise, emotions, then bathing in hot water and gustatory stimulus that is eating spicy food. So all this can lead to cholinergic urticaria. Now these patients generally have the spin point itchy wheel, but dermatographism is also one very important feature which is associated with most of the arctic area. So this you need to remember that dermatographism is seen in arctic area. So dermatographism is feature of arctic area where if you take a blunt object and start rubbing that blunt object or scratching the skin of the patient with that blunt object, you will find these wheels along that line where you have scratched. So if you scratch the patient from here to here, these wheels, they appear in this direction, similarly in this direction, 
okay so these this is known as dermatographism because you are able to write over the skin okay so derma is a skin and graphism is writing so you can write over the skin dermatographism now what is the treatment for these patients treatment is if possible you can avoid the stimulus so you, if you know the stimulus you can avoid it so avoid stimulus or the triggering factor and the mainstay of the treatment is antihistamines so antihistamines are the mainstay of the treatment so this is about cholinergic urticaria but most of the patients they are suffering from chronic spontaneous urticaria so this is also very important chronic spontaneous urticaria which is also known as chronic idiopathic urticaria so chronic spontaneous urticaria or chronic idiopathic urticaria is also very important and most of the patients they are suffering from this type of urticaria because the prevalence of this urticaria is around 1% of the total population so you can see that huge amount of numbers of patients are suffering from this chronic idiopathic urticaria it is common in females so it is commonly seen in females so in the ratio of 2 is to 1 and the causes of this chronic spontaneous or idiopathic urticaria are many like it can be due to autoimmune or physical so there there are various physical stimuli which can lead to then chronic infection then it can be obviously idiopathic as the name is itself suggesting idiopathic and last but not the least urticarial vasculitis so there are multiple causes for this chronic urticaria now if you understand the pathology of this all these factors so all these uh, multiple factors they actually ultimately lead to stimulation of mast cells so these mast cells these mast cells they are activated and they start releasing their mediators so these mediators are released and the common mediators are histamine so histamine is the common mediator though there are various other mediators like leukotriene so leukotrienes like b2 c2 then prostaglandins like prostaglandin d2 and various interleukins so all these are released and all these inflammatory mediators they lead to activation of inflammatory cells so there is activation of inflammatory cells there is vasodilatation so it leads to vasodilatation and extravasation of these inflammatory cells from the capillaries so extravasation of the inflammatory cells in the fluid and the recruitment of further inflammatory cells so due to activation of these inflammatory mediators it leads to pruritus so these lesions become more itchy and due to vasodilatation erythema develops so they are red in color due to extravasation of the fluid and the inflammatory cells there is a veal and when there is recruitment of many inflammatory cells there there is infiltration in the skin so you can see all these features are seen due to the activation of the mast cells so these lesions they are itchy they are red they have veal and they are infiltrated lesions now to make the diagnosis not many tests are required you can do routine tests like cbc esr then c reactive protein then you can do the thyroid profile so thyroid profile of the patient can be done and blood sugar levels because many a times they are associated with these conditions okay but one important test is ASST what is ASST it is autologous serum skin test so this is autologous serum skin test which is done in cases of chronic spontaneous urticaria and this is nothing what we do we inject we inject 0.5 ml of patient's own serum and wait for 30 minutes and 
then we examine the site and we have a control also control in the control site we just inject normal saline so if there is more than equal to 1.5 mm wheel develops in comparison to the control then this is considered to be a positive so positive autologous serum test is if it is more than equal to 1.5 mm in comparison to the control normal saline where you have injected okay so if this wheel develops then this is positive and obviously you need to avoid the use of antihistaminic before you do this test okay now let us come to the treatment of chronic urticaria so for the treatment of urticaria there is a guideline which was given in 2013 by european academy of allergy and clinical immunology so according to this guideline the first line treatment is second generation h1 antihistaminics so second generation h1 antihistaminics should be preferred as the first line treatment and if the patient is not responding to this treatment you have given this for 2 weeks and still the patient is not responding then you can move on to the second line treatment which is you can up the dose so up dosing so you can increase the dose of these second generation h1 antihistaminic and it can be increased up to four folds so four folds increase in the dose and if the patient is still not responding after one to four weeks of up dosing the antihistaminic then the third line treatment becomes you can add various other drugs like cyclosporin or montelukast which is a leukotriene antagonist so montelukast or a newer drug that is omalizumab omalizumab which is a monoclonal antibody so omalizumab which is a monoclonal antibody is important here and let us note down few points about omalizumab which is a recent drug and it is used for these cases not responding to the first or the second line treatment of urticaria so omalizumab is important and you can note down few points about omalizumab that it is humanized it is humanized monoclonal igg antibody igg antibody against against ige so these are the monoclonal antibodies which are against ige and as you know ige is important mediator for this urticaria so ige is targeted these are against ige and how these omalizumab how this monoclonal antibody works it it actually binds it binds to circulating ige antibodies it thus decreases the mast cell bonding of ige so the bond which is formed between the ige and the mast cell is decreased and third thing it also decreases the ige receptor numbers so you can see that this is a very helpful drug in cases of chronic urticaria which are not responding to first or the second line treatment of urticaria so remember this drug that is omalizumab which acts against ige by winding to circulating ige decreasing the mast cell bonding of ige and decreasing the ige receptor numbers so thank you very much this is all for today so remember this important topic that is urticaria because recently in 2016 both in may and november aims this question was asked 
सो थैंक यू वेरी मच डू नॉट फॉर्गेट टू सब्सक्राइब एंड लाइक थैंक यू